All right. Good morning and welcome everybody to your Healthy Self podcast or Never Stop Healing. Um, it, this is your host of the day, Kate Archibald, and uh, really excited. I am joined by founder of East West Health and creator of this uh, podcast and community, Reagan Archibald. Reagan, how you doing? Awesome. Yep. Just finished your great workout. And so I'm um, feeling good. Great. Dig in the background. Nice find there. Yeah, it's um, gorgeous. I, I think right now Reagan's on his cell phone. Just uh, <laughs> he's uh, especially after a workout. That's pretty impressive. You're, you're just holding your phone up there in front of your face. So well done, sir. <laughs> um, we we had an awesome uh, health accelerator challenge last night. We are prepping for the 60 day reset. So Reagan, any uh, words of encouragement for um, the, the members. Yeah. So there's six things and I'll just announce this, then I'll jump my arm starting to burn. <laughs> so, so number, <laughs> number one is, um, we're going to do a 24 hour fast. So it'll be at some stage in the 60 day reset and you're going to do 20,000 steps. And if you only fast for eight hours, you know, maybe you skip one meal instead of three, that's fine. You know, it's not about perfection. It's about changing who you are and identifying yourself with some your your future version of who you want to become. So one of the challenges will be uh, exercising every day, uh, making sure you're in bed by 930, up at 530, uh, no sugar. We're going to eliminate all sugar, all, all alcohol, just to, you know, and, and once again, it's it's this 60 day reset. We're going to reset your stress response with the mindset morning. So we've got some very fun things in, in store, like hot and cold exposure. So there's there's going to be six core focuses over 60 days and it will change your life forever. So do not miss this. And if you need some extra support from us, um, we're recommending that everybody does the cell core detox. And so it's this beautiful uh, process where you use some of the same technology that plants use to gather toxins from the earth, but exchange those that toxic material with nutrients in the roots of the plant. So we have that same, there's a supplement company called Cellcore Biosciences, and there is some of the most innovative medicine that I've ever seen. So make sure you get that going in your body. It will support you through this whole 60 day process. So, so that's all I've got, Kate. Awesome. And so if you're not a part of our uh, health accelerator challenge community, uh, get registered. That's acueastwest.com forward slash hack, H-A-C. And then I also just uh, posted a link in the chat box where you can grab the Cellcore product. You can use hack, H-A-C, as a coupon code and get 10% off on that. Um, th this is something that's going to help you support, help support you through this 60-day challenge. So um, awesome. Thanks so much, Reagan. Uh, Reagan is, uh, um, we've already, uh, he, he recorded an amazing podcast with, uh, with a guest that, oh, any, any insights on, uh, your, 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 uh, podcast recording, um, before you hop off? Uh, well, you guys are going to love Sean. Like he's just a gem of a human. Uh, he's a former major league baseball player, um, retired in 2018, but just uh, he's got a real depth to him that you guys will love. So I wanted to bring him to to the community, and um, and uh, we we have a mutual friend and some some patients that we share. So so uh, enjoy Sean Sean Tolson. Love that. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna click play on that here in just a moment, just to, to clarify. Thank you so much, Reagan. Appreciate it. So we got uh, Sean Tolson um, and Reagan Archibald. Uh, that is the show today. Um, they're going to be diving into some really cool stuff. So exciting uh, to watch that. And then uh, just, just for everyone, you have the link there. If you're interested in any of the Cellcore products, you can actually hop on our, our shopping cart and grab those. We do have a um, discount code as well for the 10% off on that. And so I think some of you already have those products and you're ready for the 60 day reset. So I'm getting geared up, excited for that. Um, and without further ado, I'm, I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to listen to this great podcast. Hey everybody, 
it's Reagan here with uh, Never Stop Healing. And today we've got a really cool guest who's, who's talking. He's most remembered for the 2015 uh, season in which he served as a closer for the Texas Rangers. He finished the season with 35 saves and led the Major League Baseball with 22 saves after the All-Star break. He helped lead the Rangers to an improbable postseason appearance that, that finished 10th in the voting. That's awesome. Um, he's, Thanks. It feels good to hear that, you know, every once in a while. It's been a while since anyone's been that nice to me. Well, um, no, I mean, that's I, I, I barely made the Little League baseball team, so <laughs> that's just impressive. Uh, he's, he's now retired. He retired in 2018, right? It's a, retired's a soft word, but yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that. Yeah. And not retired, just retired. He's, he's out of baseball, but he's got big things going on, which I'm excited to talk about today. But he's become an entrepreneur. And he's used that uh, his passion for pursuing uh, proactive preventative health. Uh, Sean began Tulsa and Health Advisors under the idea that knowledge without action is useless. You probably saw that in sports a lot. I didn't see that a lot. Man, yeah. so true. Uh, he continued to saw individuals who knew the changes that needed to be made, but were never provided with the necessary guidance, coaching, accountability, and encouragement to be successful. Sean and his team of coaches at Tolson Health have created the Peak Potential Project, an extensive membership-based community of like-minded business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives committed to a life lifetime of optimized health and human performance. Through consistent engagement, members will uncover cutting-edge science tools and testing required to design a life free of the effects of aging and decline. And so uh, that's that's exciting. So this is where our, our purpose is aligned. You guys will see Sean's own health journey began during his major league baseball career. He reached a point in his career where he the same foods and exercises just weren't cutting it anymore. He experienced a lack of energy, chronic pain and inflammation and began to gain weight. The Tolson Health Advisors and partners with individuals um, Turn back the clock on health through a combination of ancestral practices and modern technologies. They cover topics like food, hydration, sleep, stress management, genetics, exercise, environmental toxins, and more. The goal of his programs is to harmoniously blend modern societal norms with natural biological rhythms. So let's give it up for Sean Tolison. Yeah. Hey, whoever wrote that bio is wow. I mean, what, what a writer. <clears throat> Someone must have texted that to you about That's... 30 seconds ago. So. <laughs> nice. It was that guy. It was, it was really yeah. helpful. So there's a lot that we want to talk about today, but if we put ourselves at the end of the show, there's a couple of things I'd like our listeners to, to first and foremost get out of this, which is there is a way that they can improve their health. And so if you just had to right out of the gate say, here's three of the top things that I think every human should be doing to optimize their health, what would what would those three things be? Number one uh, is the one people don't want to hear. Okay, sleep. Mm. I'd say probably number one, sleep. Yep. Um, I see it over and over again with the people that I work with. Um, like the excuse that there's not enough hours in the day, but right. um, being able to really truly turn your mind off and to sleep is an important, important thing. And if you yep. think about it from, you know, if there's one thing that you'd rather give up in a day, right? Or like, even think about today, right? Like, would you rather not eat today or would you rather not sleep today? Not eat. And it's like, it's no question. Yep. And you ask that to anybody and it's, it's an easy answer. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so much, um, when people think about how to be healthy, we think about, yeah. okay, well, what can I eat to be healthier? Or what can I not eat to be healthier? And I, mean, I think that does come into play yeah. um, for sure, but it's not, it may not be in my top five, like mm. what you're actually eating. Um, so number one, sleep. Number two, I'm going to say stress. And this is, 
Oh, actually, all three of mine, I think people are going to hate to hear. Uh, so sorry about that. If you want to turn the podcast off now, you can. That was a good time. Um, no, uh, I'd probably say stress. This is another one. It's like when people, when clients come and work with me, it's, um, there's no quick fix. There's no quick answer. Um, there's no amount of dark green leafy salads you can eat that make up for living a stressed out life. Wow. Um, and so number two, stress. Number three, I'm going to say cold exposure. That's why it's hey, one that, people don't, that people don't like, but I love cold exposure. Um, I don't know that there's a hack that has more systemic benefits in your body than being really cold every day for a short period of time. <laughs> so what's the coldest you've ever been? The coldest <laughs> I've ever been. Can you, can you go back to a time where you thought you literally had hypothermia? Yeah. So, you know, back when I'm, you know, first kind of getting into this, mm -hmm. uh, like anybody who's kind of tries to push the limits on things, um, you know, I was like, well, I wonder how long I could stay in an ice bath for, mm -hmm. you know? Um, <clears throat> and by the way, for the record, it doesn't have to be that long. No. Uh, right. So you, you don't have to stay in it very long to get the longevity benefit of, of being cold. Yes. And more is not better with cold. That's for sure. More is not better. Uh, I learned that pretty quickly. I, I, I think I stayed in, you know, it was close to half an hour. Um, <laughs> and, and when I got out, um, when I got out, I was, I mean, a shiver that lasted until I went to sleep that I mean, it was, and I did this in the morning. It was a shiver that lasted all day. Um, I got almost sick feeling for, for a yeah. while. Uh, from that so yeah you don't need to stand that long uh, five minutes is actually <laughs> that's plenty pretty beneficial yeah. yeah very beneficial I, I've done the same thing you know when you can't sleep at night that you've overdone it with cold or heat yeah yeah so yeah, so I love your I mean those three things like uh, if everybody slept better we stressed a little less we had some cold exposure some heat exposure I mean imagine how much better people's health could be so one of the things that I didn't uh, mentioned to you about Sean is he's he's a human being that has learned to live life without stress and that's one of the reasons why I think it, it's phenomenal that you're talking about stress because a lot of us we talk about it and we know it's dangerous but we don't do anything about it but what have you done in your life where you could go and be in the major leagues or you could start your own business and you could have three kids and but you you don't let yourself get to that level of, of living a stressful life is what you told me. You, you don't identify with someone who's stressed. Yeah. The first, yeah, I didn't feel like I didn't know what stress was until I was probably, you know, 26, 27 years old. Um, I think that's a lot different for kids now. I think there's a lot yeah. of pressure on them. Um, but <clears throat> I just, I just really didn't understand even what stress was. Um, the first time I felt stressed and this kind of, you know, this is personal, but the first time I felt stressed was when my dad got sick. Yeah. Um, my dad was my, my dad was my guy. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of like, I was in this period of life where, um, I had success in the major leagues and that success was like fading away. I was getting injured. I was about to have surgery and I could kind of feel like, my dream was like slipping through my fingers. Mm -hmm. Um, it was like, my career was dying and I, was, right. and, and I wasn't okay with it. Um, and that's kind of how I got into this space of like thinking outside the box with your health and, um, functional medicine. Like that's, that's where I learned about all this, um, was trying to basically save my baseball career. The same time that this was happening, my dad got diagnosed with two forms of stage four cancer oh. on, <clears throat> on the same day. And, um, they gave him six months to live. And I felt like that stress and I don't, maybe it wasn't even stress. Uh, I was sad. And, yeah. and uh, for the first time in my life, I think what I felt was uh, the impact of a certain situation. So the impact of my dad being ill mm -hmm. began to trickle and have an effect in other areas of my life. Mm. And I think that's, that's what at least I identify as stress is uh, when there's something going on in your life that affects something else. So um, without a doubt, I mean, without a doubt, I, I actually don't know that I ever pitched good after my dad got sick. Like, oh, that's is that how, right? That's how, like, how much it really, wow. it, like, affected me. You know, it wow. was like, it really, really affected me. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want your audience to think that I, like, never get stressed out. I'm just like, 
I try to be even keel, but you know, my wife, if she's listening, she would laugh if she, you know, if we're sitting here talking about how I never get stressed out because I do. Um, and I don't do well with it. I think that's the difference is, is I, I can quickly recognize it and I don't like the feeling. Like I don't feel, I don't feel happy when I'm stressed out. Um, and I think getting stressed out is pretty inevitable. <clears throat> But living like, you know, like living that chronically stressed out life, like that kills you. Like, yeah, it actually, it actually, <clears throat> kills, it actually kills your body. Um, and so I, I just learned to identify that and kind of stop it in its tracks. That's so awesome. Well, and in so many people, we love stress. Like if our brains aren't stressed out about something, something's not right. You become like people are addicted. To it's it. addictive. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a problem and the, and the news feeds on it our brains are hardwired to look for the negative in life and so um it takes a, a special person to be able to disengage from that so what happened with your dad so my dad um <clears throat> he ended up passing away um but he mm -hmm. lived for about five and a half years after his after his diagnosis wow um and you know i i asked my dad uh, i was like hey do you how do you want to go about this? Um, and he, the day, you know, <laughs> the next day after he got diagnosed with this, um, my dad's always been an overcomer, right? So he mm -hmm. didn't just sit and feel sorry for himself. Um, but he began exercising more than he ever had, wow. which doesn't make sense to the outside world looking in. Mm -hmm. um, he began, began eating differently than he's ever eaten before. Um, so, you know, he went into kind of a strict, strict ketosis for a while, uh, lost a lot of weight. Uh, which the doctor said was a bad idea <laughs> um, for to lose a bunch of weight. Was he overweight? Not necessarily, maybe maybe 10, 15 pounds. Okay. Um, was wow. never a big guy. Um, <clears throat> and um, he began doing sauna, really hot sauna treatments every day. He began doing uh, ozone therapy and ozone saunas and um, nice. some of the stuff that hopefully we get a chance to talk about today. Yeah, we will. Um, and... Yeah, and, and, and it was it was a really good five and a half years. Um, I got to spend a ton of really good time with him. He saw like six grandkids get born during those five and a half years. Wow. So um, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. That, yeah, because he went from a six month uh, prognosis to uh, he, five, he added five years onto that. He added five years. Yeah, that's great. And he didn't fight it. You know, you hear so often like you fight cancer. Like he lived. Like he wasn't just he wasn't just busy fighting the whole time. Like he yeah he, he got an got, exercise. He got to live. Yeah yeah that's so awesome. Yeah I'm sure you miss him, but it's kind of interesting uh, because you said you you probably didn't ever pitch quite as well after he got the dying after that big stressful event hit. Yeah. And so I wonder how many people out there, and I bet I bet so many of you could identify. <clears throat> excuse me, identify a place. I think I got a frog in my throat. This hilarious. <clears throat> maybe i need to <laughs> apparently I'm apparently joking. this is a first but um but if we look at if you looked at um all the people out there who've had a big stressful experience and i wonder if if ptsd is not in more of our nervous systems than we realize that keeps people from being at their peak performance but because what do you see? I mean, do you see um, uh, with your, I mean, you're working with high profile executives, entrepreneurs, people who are already type A and they push themselves really hard. Um, but do you see that those people have never truly disengaged that fight or flight response from their nervous system? All the time. All yeah. the time. It's, it's tough for, it's tough for people to, uh, to get disengaged, but <clears throat> You work, you work with people who are successful in like most areas of their life. Yeah. Um, they don't like to fail. Uh, yeah. I'll compare health to baseball for a second. Um, baseball is like a game of failure. It just is. I mean, the best players in the world fail 70% of the time. So I was going to say, yeah, a good batting average is like 300, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's a game of failure. And, and, and health is kind of, it's kind of like that. Um, you know, if you, if you run a successful business and you've sold it and you've started another successful business and you've sold it and you've got a great family and you've got a great home and you've got a great savings account and retirement accounts and you've got a vacation home, like there's a, 
you've got all these balls that you've managed to juggle all of these years, mm -hmm. like congratulations. And, and, but, but you've dropped your health. Right. And, right. and so most of my clients, they're like, they're like, okay, it's time for me to pick that ball back up. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now I'm, I'm trying to look past my career and, and like, what, what does life hold? Yep. Um, and it doesn't hold much unless you have your health. Like, like the things that you want to do, you're not going to be able to do unless you truly have your health. Um, and I just, I try to help people find, find that. Um, but it's tough because when you're so used to achieving and achieving and achieving, mm -hmm. um, to go about health the right way, uh, is a lot of trial and error. Um, I have a lot of people that are like, it's like this, tell me, tell me, give me the answers. Tell me the answers. What yeah. do I need to do? Right. That approach. Just tell me what to do. I'll do anything you tell me to do. It's, it's um, more and more and more. Yeah. But it's not it's not necessarily the right approach. So, you know, you, you took your career and, and uh, retired from major league baseball. Do you still get the same level of excitement? You know, now you're, you've got this health advising company. That's amazing. Um, the people you work with, it's a very detailed plan you take them through, but just on a personal level, I mean, when you're in the major league baseball, I mean, you're, that that's high profile. Like there's a lot of eyeballs on you, but what's it like now? Do you feel like it's, is yep. your work as rewarding or do you miss major league baseball? Or is this yeah. something you don't want me to ask you about right now? Uh, <laughs> no, you can ask me about it. Um, I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to give you a cheesy answer here. Okay. My career now is not as exciting. Okay. okay? Fair enough. Yes. Right? No. And I love what I do. Um, maybe it's a different type of excitement. Um, I can't sugarcoat it though. Like I loved, I like, I love being a baseball player. Okay. I, I loved yeah. it. You, um, you'd have to, to make, just to make it to the major leagues is like, what's the odds? Like I've heard of, at one point someone told me it's like one in 3 million or something good. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But I do miss it. Um, I still love the game of baseball. Um, I miss, uh, I miss the competition. I miss mm -hmm. the challenge. I miss, I think what I really miss, if we can like talk about science, like I miss adrenaline, like I miss that adrenaline rush. Yeah, I bet. Um, it's hard to replicate in, in other areas of my life. Um, and, and like what I do now, like, no, I don't get the same adrenaline rush doing what I do. I love what I do. Absolutely. Yeah. My passion about connecting with people and, and helping them. Absolutely. I love it. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else right now, but it's a different adrenaline rush. I miss, uh, I miss like, having that camaraderie teammate like no one gives me high fives anymore like, you know what i mean <laughs> there you go Man. <laughs> but no one does that you know it's right. like uh i miss like i kind of miss that like yeah no one giving me gives me butt slaps I mean, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll save that for later no but, but um yeah i miss it i bet yeah and, and it's um i mean you're because there's a a clearly defined goal all right we need to we need to get more points on the scoreboard than the opposing Runs. team Runs, more runs, runs, excuse me, excuse me, runs. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I know that, but, um, and, and so did you get more adrenaline when you'd strike somebody out or when you'd connect with the ball and have a good hit? Mm -hmm. I didn't get many good hits. Yeah. So, uh, definitely strikeouts for me. Um, I was, my, my role was to like come and lay in the game. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with like runners on base and to like get out of a sticky situation. That was like what I was good at. And there's wow. a lot of adrenaline because like the crowd's usually like into it at that point. So yeah. that's kind of what I lived, lived for uh, was that. I only have one major league at bat my whole career. Oh, really? One at bat my whole career. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So the strike, I mean, that whole scenario is when you're just cleaning things up. Yes, I cleaned things up. Get, getting exactly. the team out of a sticky exactly. situation. Yeah. So let's talk about how you clean up health now. Like, you know, you talked about kind of the three pillars. Like if people are sleeping great, if they're managing their stress or at least stress awareness, and then if they're getting some, some cold exposure, but how would you clean up the body? What would you, what process do you take your, your clients through? Yeah. Um, we try to measure everything as much as we can. We try to measure. Yeah. Um, but I, I like to just, I'm about to use the phrase dumb things down, which isn't a good phrase to use. I realize that because nothing we do is dumb, but, um, I like to simplify things. Mm -hmm. um, it's like the more and more I read and the more podcasts I listen to and the more people like you I connect with, like you can get into the, you can get deep into the weeds and mm -hmm. it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's like, okay, so now that we're there and, and I, and I have a grasp on it and I understand it, how do I like 
it's all knotted up. But like, how do I unravel that in a way that uh, the people that I work with can understand it, can take action on things in like a bite-sized and manageable approach. Mm, yep. uh, and so it feels like they're just living life, mm -hmm. but they're actually reversing the aging process at the same time. So that's like, I like that. that's like what I try to do um, is to do that. So we, you know, much like you, much like you have these like hacks mm -hmm. um, that are for longevity, like I've created these longevity protocols and I say I've created them. I've altered them from other people, right? Other people sure. that know yeah. way more than me. Uh, and I've altered them and, and I take people through these, but um, you know, it's, it starts with gut health. That's like where we start. Mm. Um, then we go into, you know, lab work and vitamin D and like, we kind of like build a good foundation there. And then if those are in check, like there's a lot of cool things we so, and, and I like how you, you have all your clients get an aura ring mm -hmm. and then yeah. you're, you're collecting data. So every month you're like, Hey, here's how you score it on your aura ring. And then they also give you their subjective score about how they're doing on lifestyle and choices and mindsets. And so I think it's a great, it's a great thing, but you're using some objective data that most people don't use. Why the aura ring? The aura ring, good question. So the aura ring, if you guys don't know aura ring, it's like, like I'm wearing one right here. This is, <clears throat> I give one to my friend, mine to this my is friend. Yeah. yeah. So beautiful. Um, and, and, and it just is constantly collecting this biometric data that, mm -hmm. that we can use to like assess different health. So it's measuring sleep, the thing that I think is most important. Mm -hmm. um, and I can, in a way, look at stress levels too. Like what's your resting heart rate doing throughout the night? What's your heart rate variability doing throughout the night? What's your body temperature, your respiratory rate? And then activity yeah. too. Um, and not just workouts. Like there's so much emphasis on like working out. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how old the term working out is, but it's gotta be within the last 15 years. Like it's not that old of a term. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I like to create workouts. You know, we do, we do exercise programming for clients too. And um, people usually look, in fact, there's a, you know, one of our mutual clients who's right. sitting through the window right here and I can hear him talking on the phone, but, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I provided him an exercise plan and it was 15 minutes a day. And it's like, he looked at it and he's like, you got to be kidding me. 15 minutes. And, and you know, I'm trying to rewire his brain to think yeah. it's, it's, it's acute stressors of working out mm -hmm. and then chronically moving throughout the day. Yeah. And that's really how you, that's really how you stay healthy for a long time. Um, I don't even know. So with the work, we're, we're collecting data, but um, we provide them analysis at the end of every month yep. um, for improvements that they made, not just from this biometric data from the order ring, but also from just like we track their habits like it's nobody's business. So whether it's habits from what you're eating or what you're drinking, what you're not drinking, mm -hmm. how you're sleeping, the supplements you're taking to other life hacks, like just being outside and touching your bare feet to the ground and hugging people <laughs> like right. like Love these them. are all habits and we're tracking these every week we're tracking you know exactly how many people you hugged every week. <laughs> like, like we can see this and um and people like it people like being able to keep a score on their health yeah because uh, you know most doctors visits uh, it's like okay well uh, let's go through a review of systems and then the way i was trained is you're just looking for symptoms that are showing up everywhere but when you start going back to somebody's habits and their behaviors, you can get into the cause. And then the aura ring, uh, one of the things that is so fascinating about it is, yes, you can track, you know, your activity levels um, for the most part. But you can also see how well someone's sleeping and, and their heart rate variability. Do you guys do anything with that when you say, well, your heart rate variability is pretty high. You can go hard today. We do that. <clears throat> yeah. So heart rate variability um, is like. I like to explain it in a way that we think about our heart beating on rhythm every mm -hmm. single time. And if it doesn't, you're like, oh, that's bad. But like in reality, there's these mm, tiny microscopic variations between every heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And um, the more variation you have, it's like a sign that it's like you're in a good state of mind, body, spirit. Like you're in a good state. You've got two nervous systems, a parasympathetic and sympathetic. And like when these are in harmony, your HRV is high. Right. And, and when they're not, which most of us are not like in, in today's world, mm -hmm. um, with like, you know, the fluorescent lights and the Wi-Fi and the, and the cell phones all the time and the TV and the news and the work and 
everything's working to like drive our sympathetic nervous system big, and so it's time, it's, yeah. it's hard to balance these but when they are balanced like this is when we feel happy this is when we feel content mm -hmm. um and this is when your hrv is high and absolutely when your hrv is high it's a great day to go like push yourself to the limits yeah um and you know what do i mean by that i mean it's a great day to uh yes maybe it's go for a 20 mile hike if you want to like mm -hmm. it's a good day to do that maybe it's like mentally push yourself to the limits on those days um but it's we, we definitely want to track this balance and, and you can increase your hrv over time yeah um and that's something that we try to like we try to do that's like one of our measurables is like how do we increase your monthly average hrv every month um and i'll tell you it's not by dieting <laughs> at all um exercise can help but most of it is like it's like between your ears yeah. uh, and it's like it's like releasing yourself from stress uh it does more <laughs> for that and not drinking so much alcohol that too alcohol right. is it makes it tough yeah well and the other thing is uh, you mentioned cold exposure uh one of the best ways you can reset your your heart rate variability is jump in cold yeah so if you have a poor night's sleep and you have a, a big performance day mm -hmm. Um, and maybe you, you probably know this data, but you can jump in a, a cold bath and two minutes later, you can check your heart rate variability and it will be, you'll have a much greater HRV. So, actually did not. so if you decide to go back into the major league baseball and you've got a night before the big game, but you didn't sleep well, which I'm sure you would no problem for you because you, you, you know how to manage stress well, but that would be a nice little hack. So I'm laughing because, uh, before every game, I got an ice bath. Oh, did you really? Before the game. Everyone else did it after the game. Before um, is so much better, I, yes. Yes, no one believed me. So much but better. But everything I read, and everything I read, it made sense in my brain yep. to get an ice bath before, and then afterwards, uh, rather than slapping a bunch of ice on my body, mm -hmm. um, afterwards, I would do uh, like resistance band activities, and I would, uh, I would get on like the, the arm bike and I would just move my arm and sweat. Yeah, that's awesome. No yeah, way. So I, I always did it backward. Everyone else warmed up and then iced afterwards and I was iced before and then warmed up after. Well, well, and it makes sense because you're burning off all the adrenaline and noradrenaline because, yeah. you know, if you don't metabolize those, if you don't give the dopamine a chance to actually get processed, you're going to stay awake all night and yeah. be thinking about the game. And so, oh, look at that little genius right here. That's, that's awesome. I just had, I, mostly it was because I had to, you know, something to rip, uh, wear the Red Bull off. I tell you, I was so, I was so addicted to Red Bull. What was I, that like? I was, I've so, actually never had one. It was so, you should have one. I wish I had one right now to give me. To this we we day, just had coffee, so. To I, this day, though, I, like, I haven't had a Red Bull in, I mean, it's been, I don't know, four or five years. I, even when I was playing, I stopped. I started doing, I started, people were laughing because I had this like mini uh, French press in the bullpen. Mm. And I would like bring my bag of I love locally that. roasted coffee and I'd grind it down there. And then I, I mean, it was like this whole, and I would make myself this beautiful cup of coffee in like every sixth inning. Um, that's what I did when I understood what health was. But before, I mean, I would, I was drinking like hundreds and hundreds of Red Bulls a year. Wow. But to this day, like, if you crack one open, I'd be like, it smells so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did it give you wings? Never had wings. <laughs> Never did. I'll have to try one one of these days. They're not, I, the, they're not the worst yeah, thing in the world for you. They're really not. There's certainly, um, yeah, our kids these days, the nice thing about Red Bull, I mean, there's some artificial stuff, which is concerning and, and the, the stimulatory process, properties, but... Yeah, at least they're not getting the high fructose corn syrup yeah. like um, like the sodas. Yeah, it was the just it was the it was the good old sugar. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at you know the process people are going through, I mean, there's habits, there's the the objective markers that you that you use. What would you say is like at the heart of of how you help people move from a, a place of pretty good health to optimizing their health? The core of it is um, the core of it is just it's just communication and accountability. Oh wow! So okay. um, I don't you know it's unfortunately the core of it is not. We do a lot of really cool things um, to like 
reverse your biological clock. Like we do a lot of things to like reverse the aging process to make you feel better, to make you look better, to make you perform better. Um, but the core of it is not any of those because I, I've seen it so many times where, um, you know, you've written books. Like I, sure. I, could, yeah. hand, I could hand someone one of your books mm-hmm. and they could read it and they could learn what to do. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean they're going to do it. Right. Yeah. In fact, it probably means they're still not. They'll have the knowledge. It's like what you you read it in my bio that I wrote for you. Remember, but like knowledge, <laughs> knowledge without action, knowledge without action is useless. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like it's so true. Like we can learn this stuff, but unless you have somebody who's holding you, who's willing to hold you accountable, mm-hmm. and you're willing to be held accountable. Yeah. So, um, clients that I've worked with who have continued to like sign up year after year to work with me, it's it's not because of anything cool. There's no, it's, it's like not because they have the pizzazz. It's because it's because I text them. Mm-hmm. We talk yeah, and I hold them accountable. They have very, they have goals that they can see things that they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And they know that I'm going to text them about that. That's awesome. You know, and that's, that's really at the core of it. And if you've got somebody at home who can be your health accountability partner, awesome. Like, very few people have that in their life. That's true. Yeah. Um, they have nags, you know, people who are yeah, like nag, which is not, uh, mm-hmm. that's different than an accountability partner where you have an agreement in place. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, my wife and I, like we're doing a 60 day reset and then all of our, our people in our health accelerator community are doing a 60 day reset. And so it's like, okay, our number one policy, no nagging because yeah. it creates stress. Right. Yeah. But you can have support. So, how is it that you communicate with a person in a way where they don't feel like if they're not living up to their, you know, the, the goals they set, how do you communicate in a way that doesn't turn them off or actually make them feel small? It's by like showcasing, willing to showcase your own vulnerability and failures. That's, that's it. Um, so um, you cannot approach, you can't be like, you know, on a soapbox, talking about yeah. it but you really what i do is i share my own experiences and failure in the same area that they're feeling and usually that experience that i'm sharing happened like yesterday or two days ago or last week or a couple mm-hmm. you know it's like very recent real things like um i think i think so much when we hear the word like optimized health uh, i think of these people who's just like this is all they think about this is their life right um like you're never going to get to eat a cheeseburger cheeseburger again. And it's like, you know what? Like that's no, that's no way to live it either. Um, cheeseburgers are pretty amazing. Um, I agree. They're right. Yeah. The cheeseburgers are good. There's nothing wrong with the cheeseburger. Um, there's something wrong with a cheeseburger every day. Um, sure. yeah. and, and I, I stress a lot with, um, I've told you like, I, I don't like to talk about a lot about like what people eat. Mm-hmm. Like it's way more important the other habits that we're working on. It's more important when you eat than when you eat is what you eat. Yeah. Um, but um, you know we, you know, do I have people that are like, can you send me recipes for this or some ideas for meal prep? And I'm like, yeah, I can. You know, but like meal prep, do you really want to meal prep and eat the same thing all week long? Like. Mm-hmm. like don't let's not over like let's not overthink this um that's kind of like that 80 percent rule like i, I really do yeah. live and die by that like do it's the right do the right thing 80 percent of the time 20 percent of the time do what you feel like doing and sometimes yeah. it's the right thing and sometimes it's not um i don't even know where i was going with that we were talking about cheeseburgers for a second. <laughs> oh you know uh, making when, people feel like when, when people are asking me like what to eat yeah i tell them to create and I'm glad I I'm glad I remember this because this is like actually one piece of advice that is actually my own that I didn't steal from somebody else. <laughs> um, but create ridiculously high standards for what you eat. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And and you're gonna be okay. Okay. So ridiculously high standards mm-hmm. for what you eat. So let's take a cheeseburger for example. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about cheeseburgers. There's a whole gradient of cheeseburgers. There's a gradient of cheeseburgers yes. and don't settle. Like if you're at a place that has a very subpar cheeseburger, don't order a cheeseburger. Right. Um, if you're at a place that is the greatest cheeseburger in your favorite city, like you should order that. Like that actually is better for your health 
mm-hmm. than not eating it because totally. you feel you feel restricted like there's something in that burger that makes you feel good and that's yeah. okay like it really is okay to, to eat that and, and to feel good about it and it's uh, it's like that with desserts too like like if i go to my i've got three kids if i if i go to one of my first graders uh friends birthday parties mm-hmm. and they've got birthday cake and they give me a slice of birthday like you're going for it no no, no. listen was that was that cake homemade with love <laughs> Right. Like, is it a really good cake? Yes, exactly. Then, then I probably will eat it. If they bought it at the grocery store, I'm going to pass on it. Mm-hmm. Um, like oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. I love oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. Mm-hmm. I love them. I can make the best ones in the world. Like, mm-hmm. they're they're unbelievable. Every once in a while, I will make them and I'll eat them because they're like they're so it's the best in the world. But um, I'm not going to like. I'm not going to just go to the store and eat it. You know what I'm, you know what I'm totally. saying here? No, it makes a lot of sense. Well, and there's energy behind food. There's the ingredients that go into it. And um, I'm rarely at a birthday party where they're serving dessert that's worthwhile eating, right? It's very, it's very few. It's, it's rare. And so I, I yeah. love that distinction. I usually recommend my, my patients. I'm like, make sure when you go to a family function, if you know it's not high quality food, eat before you go mm-hmm. then you're just moving food around a plate kind of and yeah it's yeah. um yeah it's like set really high standards for what you eat yeah and eat the least amount of ingredients as possible and if yeah. you do that like you're gonna be you're gonna be okay what, what are your thoughts on overeating my my japanese teacher she used to she's so wise but um, she's in her 80s now. She used to say the biggest sin that you can um, have against yourself is overeating. But what's your thoughts on overeating? It's hard to define overeating. <laughs> it is. It's hard to right. define. Like, how do you, like, really, how do you, is overeating and only if you gain weight? Yeah. Or, or can you overeat and be at an ideal weight and stay there? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, truly. Right. Yeah. Your body has ability to, like, we can to, burn like, it off. To yeah. modulate stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, you can overeat and not gain weight and you can also undereat and stay the same weight. And you don't want to do that either. Yeah. Um, my, my view on like calories is don't ever count them. First of all, mm-hmm. um, I'm not a fan of it. If it helps you like kind of like get the ship sailed in the right direction, you know, sure. do yeah. it, but yep. it's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. No one wants to count calories for the rest of their life. Um, I love eating very, very, um, what should I say? Like eat few meals. Mm-hmm. And eat as less as least often as you can so um, yeah. like i eat two meals a day most days sometimes mm-hmm. three yep. very rarely snack mm-hmm. uh, i think snack is like a kind of a funny thing like we don't need snacks but i eat two meals a day but i also i burn through a lot of calories a day like i probably burn through 3,500 calories a day. So my meals are big. Mm-hmm. Most people would say you're overeating, but I only eat two meals a day and I'm handling it. Yep. Right. And so, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a, no, I like that. That's a, that's a really uh, level, level way of thinking about it. And, and your, your timed eating pattern is great. You know, 10 to six is your ideal eating window. Mm-hmm. I'm very similar. Um, you know, we, we have, a similar philosophy as Sachin Ponda's work and yeah. the circadian code is awesome yeah. because you know you look even if you restrict your eating window to 12 hours you're going to be better off and if you can go eight you know fewer than nine it's going to help with endurance and you're going to clean out a lot of the old cells so so then it, I tell my patients if you're if you have a longer fasted cycle then you have a little more leeway on what you're putting into your body Sure. So then when you eat that cheeseburger, you're like, well, cool. I just fasted like 16 hours. So yeah. um, my body's going to handle the carbohydrates just fine. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. That's what, that's what I, I go back to. Like when you're eating is so much more important than what you're eating. Yeah. Um, I will say with like, with eating. Um, so we, by the way, we created a, a free fasting community that's just delivered through text message. So every day you get a text every week, you get a schedule for, your eating pattern for that week and when you should eat, when you shouldn't eat. People have loved it. I mean, we've got like 500 people join in and, um, and it's, it's just an easy free, like actually saves you a lot of money to not eat. (laughs) Um, but people like it. And I've had like people give me feedback, like I've never thought about it like this. Like 
you know, I've always had, I've always had high triglycerides. Like I haven't changed what I've eaten at all, but I'm just changing when I eat and my triglycerides are down, you know, it's like all this kind of cool stuff, but with like intermittent fasting, which is such a popular term now, right. um, what I've seen, and you can tell me you've been doing this way longer than I have, but people see an immense people who have never intermittent fasted before mm-hmm. you tell them to do it. They see an immense benefit right off the bat, like crazy, mm-hmm. like month one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, for like the first year yep. and then that benefit, whatever the benefit is, if it's, if it's sustained energy levels, if it's weight loss, if mm-hmm. it's sleep, kind of like starts to trickle down a little bit mm-hmm. and it's kind of just trickles down, but it's still like, you still feel good. You're still getting some weight loss. You're still feeling good. But I will say like you get to like two years of like eating in the same pattern every day. I believe that it actually starts to work against you. Um, I think your body, like we weren't meant, we weren't meant to like, yeah, eat. so true. We yeah. weren't meant to eat in a, uh, so predictably, like yeah. we need to go through periodic times with nothing to eat. Mm-hmm. We need it. So like my clients go through a 36 to 72 hour fast every month to kind of like yeah, reset things. It's a good reset. Um, we need to go through periods of time where it's like a famine. Like imagine like we live in a village and there's just not quite enough food to go around for a week. Mm-hmm. So everyone eats less. Yeah. Like we need to do that periodically. Um, but even with intermittent fasting, like 10 to 6, yes. As like a daily, like that should be your ideal window. Mm-hmm. But some days make it 12 hours like eat breakfast right uh, yeah some days only eat dinner some days eat with try to eat two giant meals within four like we always need to like be keeping our body guessing i agree it's and it's no different in exercise you know if you're doing the same yeah, exercise sure. routine for more than about two weeks your body's going to just learn to get lazy and not lazy but we're just efficient our, our biology is so efficient so um you know, I know we're, we're kind of running out of, of time here, Sean, but what would you, you know, this fasting community, is there a way people can get, to join it? Yeah, yeah, it's super easy. Um, you just open the text messages in your phone. You text the word fast to 77513. That's it. 77513. Just text fast and then you're automatically wow. opted in and you'll start um, on Sundays, we send out like a PDF of your schedule that we encourage you to set that as the background of your phone for that week. So you know, like, okay, Monday, here's what I'm doing. And you can look ahead and be like, okay, Tuesday, I'm only eating dinner. Okay, so I don't need to worry about breakfast or lunch that day. And, um, you know, that's that's the easiest way to kind of get plugged into what we do. And, and, and I'll, you know, save you some money by, by doing that. Um, <laughs> You know, otherwise you can you can go to tallestandelf.com and you can see everything that we do from from the one-on-one like VIP coaching programs to um, to our group coaching and the Peak Potential Project. Um, you can kind of just read about it there. You can apply for any of our programs, and you'll usually hear back from somebody on our team within a couple of days after you fill out an application and uh, let you know if, if we feel like you're a right fit or not. It's great, yeah. awesome. All right, well, I want to see you guys get that get fasted up get in touch with Sean. I think it'll make a big difference. So uh, last question for you. Um, what's the most impactful book that you've read in the last five years? Most impactful book I've read in the last five years. Health related or non health? No, no, anything. I'll say it's a book called, and it's the easy, it's funny because it's, I'm a slow reader. Um, I read this book in a couple of hours because it's so easy to read and it's so small, but it's called Chop Wood, Carry Water. Have you ever heard of it? I've heard of the Zen Cohen. Is it a book on Zen? It's, um, so it is a book about a samurai archer. Okay. Um, and essentially, if I could break it down, it's about the process, falling in love with the process of becoming great. Yeah. Um, which I think is a struggle. Um, we, we're, we're so quick to compare ourselves to where we are now to where we want to go, mm-hmm. right? And we forget to look back at how far we've journeyed. And, and this book is really about falling in love with that process of becoming great. I read it at a time, it's mm-hmm. probably why it was so impactful in my life, is, is um, I read it at a time when, when I was hanging up my, 
my spikes for my baseball career. Oh wow! And I was trying to like, I, I was str- I was kind of in a struggling place. I was like trying to figure out what's next. Mm-hmm. And it's like I've I've got these like ambitions of what I want to be and what I want to do. And I was getting frustrated because I couldn't figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and this book just really helped to kind of guide me into falling in love with that process of becoming great in it. And it compares it. You know, you go to, to be a samurai, samurai archer, and and I don't want to give too much of the book away, but you have to like you don't actually get to pick up a bow and arrow for like years of being right, this yeah. camp. Like, there's all these other tasks that you must do, and they compare it to, you know, like bamboo. You know, bamboo. You plant the seed, and you have to water it every single day, mm-hmm. and years and years and years and years and years go by if you water in the seed every day, and you never see, you never see a sprout. But you can't see what's happening. Like you can't the see root system, the roots. Yeah. And and I encourage like the clients I work with now. Like <clears> I, I I refer to that bamboo because, um, like I don't have a quick fix program. Like if if that's what you need, like I don't. I'm not good at that. Um, I don't believe in quick fixes. And and so sometimes month one, month two, we're establishing these like really keystone foundational habits and. Um, clients will get discouraged because they don't see the they don't see the results which is really like you know results meaning the scale like what's the scale saying and um and they get discouraged and so i encourage them like hey like you can't see what's happening here but you're creating you're creating these foundational habits that are going to carry you through the rest of your life can you talk right now are you okay I can talk am i choking, am I choking you up right now Man, with that, my with that was philosophy? that was heartwarming <laughs> heartwarming to say the least um sorry about my throat everybody i don't know what's up with it but um but that's a powerful concept because in the japanese culture my my teacher was no different it took her two months before she'd let me come into her class all i could do is clean wow and i was like so i i had to prove that i was like a real like a serious student and, and the japanese culture is built around this idea that there's perfection in everything so even the tea ceremony, they won't let you pour the tea until you've gone through all the chopping wood and carrying yeah. ca- carrying water. And I'm actually just now making the Karate Kid connection here. <laughs> like I'm trying, like I for the Wax first on, for, the, for the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, I'm actually making that connection of. <laughs> so thanks for thanks for yeah, that. you got that it. That movie actually means more than that. So. It, it, yes well well this has been awesome sean i can't wait to have you on again and we've got big projects in the future so everybody reach out to sean he's going to be a, a great uh, collaborator here um thanks so much for being on the show love you guys we'll see you next time all right thank you guys so much for joining us today we'll be back same time same place next week Amazing conversation there uh, with Sean Tolleson and Reagan Archibald. And thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back next week. Uh, Tune in then. And in between there, make sure you are getting ready for the 60-day reset. We're all uh, geared up and ready for that. Um, So so make sure, I think, um, earlier in the show, we posted about the... um, the the cell core um, products and I think those are um, those will be really beneficial as you're going through this 60 day reset so you can um, take a look at those um, there's two different protocols that you can look at um, oh and then the text message Diane asked it's seven seven five one three. Let me just confirm that. Yeah, 77513, and you text FAST to 77513. And, um, yeah, I I did that while we're on there as well. So awesome podcast today. Hope you guys have an amazing week, and we will see you all next week. Bye-bye now.